Hello, WitNet community, and thank you for joining the August community call recording. Uh, we're so happy that you guys joined us yesterday for the actual community call, but for those who couldn't, um, this is the recording for you. We also have an article posted on our blog. That's the monthly roundup article that kind of covers everything that we're going to cover here. Um, we have about 15 slides to get through, so it's about 10 minutes, maybe 15 at the most. Uh, and then, of course, in, during the community call, we actually open it up for questions. Uh, any questions that you may have, please leave them in the YouTube comments down below or uh, head over to our Telegram and Discord uh, where we can get those answered for you. Uh, but without further ado, we are going to jump into the August review. First up, we have chain integrations. Let's begin with the new and, of course, the upcoming chains. This month, we completed a chain integration onto the Mantle, Testnet, and Mainnet. We had a user that actually uses WitNet on the Kava chain that asked uh, for us to deploy on Mantle. So we prioritized it immediately for them because we have a great working relationship. Uh, we now expect to launch on base in the near future as we've uh, seen a lot of interest. And it, it's now, um, it now seems that base is stable and being used quite a lot. Um, of course, any chain you're most bullish on that we're not currently integrated on, please let us know if you would like to see a list of our chain integrations, head to feeds.witnet.io. So we're now going to move on to protocol integrations, upcoming and uh, in the works. Uh, we're talking about two new protocols that will be using WitNet in the near future. Number one is PinJam. That's actually the protocol that was on, that is on Kava and asked us to move to Mantle. Um, they are a lending and borrowing protocol uh, that's using WitNet on Kava. They take pride in uh, what they call 100% of capital efficiency. So when you deposit into their protocol, they are using 100% of your deposit to earn the best yield possible, whereas a lot of other lending and borrowing protocols only use roughly around 30%. So by using PinJam, you're actually earning the highest yield in all of DeFi. Um, like I said, PinJam is using WitNet on Mantle. The other protocol is uh, Noom Crypto, which will be using WitNet on Polygon ZKEVM. They're focusing on commerce uh, and peer-to-peer -peer payments or business payments, I guess you could say, uh, using the ultra-fast Polygon uh, tech stack. Next up, we have new price feeds. Uh, these are the ones that were deployed to Mantle. We have uh, Bitcoin to US dollars, ETH to US dollars, Mantle to US dollars, Tether, so the USDT, uh, USDC to USD, and USDT to USD. Um, so you'll see it there in the bottom. Uh, that's actually Mantle Testnet. The same price feeds have de been deployed onto Mantle Mainnet. Next up, ecosystem news. We're actually ripping along here in this community call recording. Um, community creation contests. In August, early August I should say, we ran a community creation contest that allowed our community to create a piece of content and post it to the world. There were three different tiers of varying prizes based on what you could submit as, um, as a completed project. So the community actually came together to fund the project with 60,000 wit out of their own pockets, which is really incredible. I want to thank everybody who um, sent payments in and, we, and allowed us to do this. It was a lot of fun and it was really cool to see uh, the community voting on what their favorite um, piece of content was and uh, different people submitting it. It actually allowed WitNet to grow a little bit, so it was awesome. Uh, like I said, the, uh, everything was voted on by the community, especially the people who uh, sent wit in. And um, you can see some of the submissions below. Uh, the one on the left was the number one. Uh, he earned 30,000 wit. And the, the one in the middle earned, um, I believe it was, I want to say 20 or t 10 or something. The other one on the right was also 10. I don't remember the actual tiers at this point. It's been quite a while. Um, so, of course, this contest was the basis for the new WitNet Advocate program that we will learn about a little bit later on. Next up, we have the Stealth X Exchange. We're so happy to announce the third swap exchange that the WitCoin has been listed on after Let's Exchange and SimpleSwap. These integrations continue to grow volume uh, and or trading volume and liquidity of the WitCoin as it opens up the WitCoin to new price pairs that aren't available on the um, uh, spot exchanges like MXC, Gate, and BitMart. So WitNet is now on six total exchanges, MXC Global, Gate.io, BitMart, Let's Exchange, SimpleSwap, and StealthX. So very fantastic news. We're very happy about that. Higher awareness of the Witcoin. Um, and it just 
really uh, shows legitimacy for the project that we're growing in the bear market. Next up, wit in the news. Um, I love seeing tweets like this. I wanted to take some time to reflect on them. Um, it's just you know random people who um, are adding wit to their portfolio. Uh, of course, we've been steadily growing uh, the community in the last few months, and I think these tweets are a great representation of this. Um, please remember that tier one exchanges want to see a strong, tight knit and engaged community as a precursor to listings. So continue to tweet, um, interact in our community channels and be engaged. Uh, next up, we have some wallet uh, updates. Uh, first one is the wallet import uh, update. So we recently added a nice uh, user experience feature to MyWit Wallet and Sheikah. So with these updates, we included the ability to import your private key via scanning a QR code. Essentially, if you wanted to import your wallet from Sheikah uh, to MyWit Wallet, you would just have to show the QR code on Sheikah on your desktop, open the camera on MyWit Wallet, and then scan the QR code. And then all of the wallet information will be imported into MyWit Wallet, and you can begin using it immediately. So it's a very nice feature that we've added in early August. Next up is MyWit Wallet version 0.1.15. So this brought some bug fixes and some awesome features that we're really excited for. Uh, bugs. We fixed the default size and position when you open my wet wallet on desktop. And we've also fixed the error message when sending weighted, uh, weighted fee transactions. Next, for the features, we've added extra security because you can now use biometric authorization like Face ID and Touch ID to open the my wet wallet application on your uh, mobile, mobile device. Uh, we also added reestablishing the wallet by reimporting your C phrase in case you get locked out of your phone. Um, we've also added the ability to import a single address wallet so you can maintain your node directly from your phone, which is very huge. A lot of people were asking for that. The ability to uh, operate and manage your node directly from your phone is a very relevant feature within WitNet, and especially when it transitions to proof of stake, that's going to be huge. Next up, we have my web wallet was added to the Microsoft Store. Uh, this just further grows the awareness of uh, WitNet, my wit wallet, and it just shows some legitimacy. So we're really happy about that. That happened uh, about two weeks ago, and um, yeah, now you can direct you can download it directly from uh, Microsoft Store. Next up, community growth statistics. Uh, this is something that really excites me as a community builder for WitNet. On the left, we have our Discord new members over the last month, and on the right is the Telegram members for the last month. Both are up and to the right, even in a bear market, which is very exciting to see. Uh, it proves that more people are finding WitNet and joining the community and becoming part of the WitNet revolution. And additionally, like I said in the community call yesterday, it just proves that our uh, strategy of building shit that people want, excuse my language, excuse my language building stuff that people want, uh, is of the utmost importance and we always build before we announce and uh, it just shows that this is a legit legitimate project with passionate people behind it and people really like that in this industry so um, keep it up and uh, we're happy to see that, that it's working what we're what we're doing and how we're positioning ourselves in the market is really uh, shaping up to be great when the um, bull market starts I guess you could say I don't I really like talking bull and bear but you know, it's important. We also released a few articles in August that are very important as they relate to WitNet 2.0. I suggest you go read them on our, our blog uh, as soon as you can. So first article is how we expect the WitNet network to decentralize further after the transition to proof of stake. The next article was a discussion of the tokenomics um, proposals. There were four different that were um, uh, drafted and these, could, these will drastically change the uh, tokenomics, so they're very important to uh, stay up to date on. The final article is a piece about what current miners can expect after the uh, WitNet moves to proof of stake. So all three of these are very important. Um, please go read them. Next up is the uh, proof of stake updates. So decisions are being and have been made for the direction and the architecture of how proof of stake um, will function. Execution and implementation phase will begin as early as Monday, September 18th. So um, mark that date on your calendar. Next up, we're going to go over the WitNet Advocate Program. WitNet Advocate Program is a low commitment program and a third rendition or the third season of the WitNet Advocates. Uh, it allows anyone to participate, help create content, and earn wit for doing so. 
The goal is to grow the community and help others learn and become familiar with WITNET. So but essentially advocates choose tasks that are released on Monday and due by the next Sunday. Once they're submitted, they are reviewed and paid out if they match the guidelines. So essentially if it's a high quality post, it has the information correctly, it's easy to read, it'll help bring in new people to the community, um, it'll be rewarded with some WIT. Uh, after we launched it, we had to pause the program to adjust a few measures and add accountability systems because uh, there were a few people that were um, sending in like AI generated content and that's not fair. So um, we are taking a stronger look at that or we did take a stronger look at that. And we have guardrails to, to um, avoid that. It's now live and you can see it on our website. Go to witnet.io, scroll down a little bit and you'll see the advocate program. So we're all... Um, all hyped about that over here and we've already had I think we've had a total of 185 submissions we've paid out nearly 50,000 wit and we've had 90 unique advocates sent in tasks so get on it uh, here are two great advocate submissions that I had um, sent to me the one on the left is a tweet thread about um, some partnerships that WITNET uh, has seen in the last few years. And on the right, we have a Oracle comparison chart. Um, so we're really happy about that. And below, you'll see the credit given to them just because uh, I didn't really know how to credit them adequately. So I just put in their Twitter profile or their Telegram username. Uh, that actually concludes the uh, WITNET community call for the month of August. We hope to see you in September, roughly the last week of September, uh, the week of the 25th, the 30th. I'm expecting it to be on the 27th of that uh, week. So hopefully to s uh, we will see you then. And thank you for uh, checking out the August community call recording. Have a good one.